In alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam Allah, wa rasulullah. We're continuing with our topic of allegiance to Allah, the allies of Allah and the allies of shaitan. And today what I'm going to speak about is how the allies of Allah, we already talked about how the allies of Allah are not perfect. They make mistakes. They commit sins, but they're quick to do what? They're quick to turn back to Allah and repent. And also another quality that the allies of Allah have is they are people who are filled with hope. They have a lot of hope. And that's what we're going to speak about today. First of all, the allies of Allah, they understand that to Allah belongs the creation, the authority and the command. They know that the only person or the only entity that we are held accountable to is Allah. Allah tells us in the interpretation of the meaning, verily your Lord is the one who created the heavens and the earth in six days and then set on the throne. He covers the day with the night, which seeks its persistency. The sun, the moon, and the stars are subjugated to his command. Verily, his is the creation and the command. Blessed is Allah, the Lord of the world. So the allies of Allah understand that everything here belongs to him, including your children. Your children are just gifts that Allah has given us. Your husband is just a gift. Your wife is just a gift alone from Allah. Okay, so Allah is the creator of all things. He is the, their Lord and their sovereign. Also, there is no other creator other than he. There is no other Lord. Whatever he wills becomes and whatever he doesn't want to happen will not happen. And that's what we have a problem with. Nothing can harm or benefit you unless Allah allows it. Shaitan has no power, no authority over any of us. He does not have the power to harm or benefit you unless Allah allows it. And so the allies of Allah understand that. They understand that everything is through his will, his power, and his decision and not anyone or anything else's. And also the allies of Allah understand that Allah commanded us to obey him. And to not just obey him, but to obey his prophets. And they also understand that Allah forbade us to disobey him and to disobey his prophets. The allies of Allah understand that Allah has commanded us to worship him alone with complete sincerity and intentions. And Allah has forbidding, forbidden us to associate anything with him. In fact, the best of all deeds is to worship Allah alone, to put him first and foremost over everyone, including your parents, including your children, including yourself. Listen to what Allah says in the interpretation of the meaning verily Allah does not forgive the associating of partners with him and he will forgive anything less than that to whomever he wishes whoever associates partners with Allah has gone very far astray indeed and among the people are those who make others as equals to Allah they love them as they should love Allah but those who believe are more intense in their love for Allah. So again, the allies of Allah, they truly love him. They don't put their families, their job, their money, not even themselves before him. Listen to what Ibn Masood tells us in an authentic hadith. He said, one day he went to the prophet and said, O oh, prophet of Allah, which sin is the most serious sin? He said, the most serious sin to commit is to make a partner with the law. And then Ibn Masood asked him, well, what's the worst sin to do after that? The prophet said, after that, the worst sin you can do is to kill your children out of fear that you will not be able to feed them. And then Ibn Masood said, well, what's worse after that? And the prophet said, to commit adultery with the wife of your neighbor. So here we can see, guys, you know, of all of the, these horrific sins, the number one is to associate partners with Allah. 
okay and so many people uh, uh so many of us will be in the hellfire because even though we say we have allegiance to a law we believe in him we associate partners with him we put others equal to him we even when we pray just like the christians call upon jesus you got some people who call themselves muslims they call upon their imams and and even the prophet when they should only call upon a law listen to what Allah says in the interpretation the meaning those who do not call to any other deity except Allah and do not take the soul that Allah has forbidden um, except for just cause and who do not commit illegal sexual actions whoever does that will meet a pit in the hellfire reserved for punishment so again guys the allies of Allah they have strong faith they don't just pronounce that shahada every day when they pray. They really, really live up to it. They believe it and they implement it. They really, really, really mean it. And also, Allah has enjoined justice, kindness, and helping those who are in need, being good to your relatives, and Allah has forbidden for us from being obscene and doing bad actions and hurting others. The allies of Allah understand this. So they're kind and just. They look out for their family members. They stay away from, the, from things that are bad. They don't transgress the rights of others. Because they know by adhering to this, this is how you even get closer to Allah. You earn his love more. Allah loves for us to be just and kind to people, even the non-Muslims. As long as they are not fighting us, we're kind and just to them too. And also Allah loves for us to repent. And this is something else that the allies of Allah do because they know that they're not free of mistakes. So they're often making dua, asking Allah, you know, to forgive them of their transgressions and to keep them, you know, upon the straight path. They know that Allah hates for us to disobey him. And they know that Allah hates all the things he made haram. Allah doesn't hate anything that he made lawful. But he does hate everything that he made haram. Listen to what Allah says in the interpretation, the meaning, the evil of all such things is hateful in the sight of your Lord. So again, you know, uh, to be an ally of Allah, your behavior should be a reflection of that. You're good and kind. You help others in need. And you're very good and kind with your relatives. And you are living your life trying to do what's pleasing to Allah. And again, Allah hates corruption and he is not pleased with it. And again, this is why the allies are often repenting. In fact, repentance, a lot of Muslims may not understand this, but just as we are commanded to believe in Allah and to obey him, we're also commanded to repent too. Listen to what Allah says in the interpretation of meaning, repent to Allah, all of you, O oh, believers, in order that you may be successful. Even the prophet Muhammad, here he was a man already forgiven for his sins, but he still used to repent to Allah. The prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, O oh, people, repent to your Lord, for by the one in whose hand is my soul, I ask his forgiveness and I repent to him more than 70 times a day. And in another hadith, he says, sometimes when my heart gets kind of uh, weak, he said, I seek forgiveness from Allah over a hundred times in a day. Now, this is the prophet. If the prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, could repent over a hundred times a day, when he was already forgiven of his sins, what does that say about you and me? 
when we don't do it at all or we may not do it often at all so again the allies of Allah they're const they're they're consistent in repenting to Allah because they know that none of us are perfect and they want to make sure that they stay in the good favors with Allah in fact Allah has commanded us that even at the the whenever we do something good to seek forgiveness of him uh, from him and again the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he did not sit around uh supplicating after the prayer like you see so many innovating muslims do today your supplications should be done during the prayer when you're in sujood or when you're bowing you know or you whatever after the prayer the prophet did not make dua what he would do was just make up he would simply just seek forgiveness he used to seek forgiveness from Allah three times after the conclusion of every prayer and then he would say oh Allah you are the peace and from you is peace blessed are you he would glorify and praise Allah the prophet did not supplicate asking Allah for anything after the prayer he asked from Allah during the prayer after the prayer he would seek forgiveness and glorify and praise Allah and that's what we should do start making your supplications during the prayer after the prayer ask for forgiveness and then glorify Allah say oh Allah you are the peace and from you is peace blessed are you oh possessor of greatness Allah loves to be glorified even Allah tells us to seek his forgiveness. Allah says in the interpretation of meaning those who seek forgiveness in the small hours of the night. These are the ones that Allah really, really listens to. For those of you who don't know, Allah comes down to the lowest heaven during the last third of every night. And he holds out his hand and he says, who of my servants has something that they need from me? You get your supplications answered, you know, even more if you wake up and supplicate during the last third of the night, which is right before Fajr. Subhanallah. So we need to start supplicating more and asking for forgiveness because that's what the allies of Allah do. The allies of Allah, they're constantly, constantly asking Allah to forgive them of any of their sins. Okay? And that's something that we need to work on. And for those of us who do seek forgiveness, for those of us who remember Allah often, this is when you will find Allah there to help you in your time of need. Listen to what Allah says in the interpretation of meaning. When the help of Allah comes in victory and you see the people coming into the deen of Allah in, in droves, celebrate the praises of your Lord and seek his forgiveness. Verily, he is ever returning with acceptance. So here you can see, guys, Allah wants us he asks us to seek forgiveness from him at the end of the day at the end of our good works and all of that to turn to him call upon him seek him out and this is what the allies of Allah does okay we have a hadith whereas once Abu Bakr asked the prophet he said oh prophet of Allah teach me a supplication that I can uh, say in my prayers to Allah the prophet said say oh Allah surely I have oppressed myself to a great degree and no one can forgive sins except for you forgive me with a forgiveness from you and have mercy on me verily you are the forgiving the most merciful what a beautiful supplication listen to what uh, what that supplication is saying you're saying oh Allah surely I have wronged myself to a great degree because again nobody is perfect we all make mistakes but no one can forgive sins either except for Allah so you're asking Allah to forgive you of any transgressions you did against yourself 
anything that you've done that may jeopardize your soul and put you on the wrong side when you're in that grave. This is a wonderful supplication. And also we have another hadith where Abu Bakr said to the prophet, O prophet, teach me a supplication that I can ask Allah for in the morning and in the evening. The prophet said, say, O Allah, you are the originator of the heavens and the earth. You are the knower of the unseen and the seen. You are Lord of everything. I bear witness that there is no deity other than you. And I seek refuge in you from the evil within myself and from the evil of the shayateen and also his association and from anything which would bring evil to me or any other Muslim. This is another wonderful supplication because you're seeking refuge in Allah from the evil of yourself, the evil of the devil and anything else. This is a supplication that the prophet taught Abu Bakr to say in the morning when he wake up and in the evening, subhanAllah. So when you get up in the morning and say this supplication, even in the afternoon, say it. And when you lie down to sleep, say it, subhanAllah. Allah. That way you will stay under the protection of Allah and you're remembering here. So again, the allies of Allah, what makes them stand out is not only the fact that they have the correct belief system. It's not only the fact that they fulfill their obligations. It's not only the fact that they obey Allah and they stay away from what Allah commanded, but also the fact that they have hope of Allah's mercy because they understand that they're not perfect, that they can make mistakes, that they can sometimes give in to their desires and sin. But what makes them different is they are quick to turn back. They're always seeking forgiveness. They're always asking Allah to help them, to help keep them straight, to help give them, keep them from giving in to the evil side of themselves. That's what makes them stand out. And that's how they end up earning Allah's love. Because remember, the two people whom Allah loves the most is the person who keeps himself clean and the person who repents. And the more you repent and seek Allah's forgiveness, the closer you get to him and the more you earn his love. Remember that hadith? Allah asked the angels, here's my servant asking me to forgive him. Has he ever seen, uh, uh, seen my, my paradise? You know, but he's still asking me to forgive him to allow him in the paradise. Allah loves that. And again, guys, remember, we, human, mankind, we, out of all of Allah's creation, we were the only one foolish enough, foolish enough to accept free will. When Allah offered that free will to the rest of his creation, they refused it because they knew that the simple fact that you have the ability to think for yourself means you're going to be held accountable. The sun refused it. The moon refused it. The mountains, the earth. But when he offered it to man, we accepted it. Listen to what Allah says in the interpretation of the meaning. We offered this trust to the heavens and the earth and the mountains, but they refused to accept its burden. They were afraid of it. Then man took it on and verily man is forever prone to criminality. He's forever prone to foolishness. So here we can see, you know, we, we, we took on the gift of free will, but not knowing that that gift was also a curse. Because if you choose to do things that contradict what Allah says do, you're going to end up punished with that hellfire. So that's why the allies of Allah, they understand that. And they make it their goal to strive for paradise. Knowing that sometimes we'll make bad decisions. So this is why they're constantly repenting. They're repenting. Like the prophet, the prophet used to seek Allah's forgiveness over a hundred times a day. The allies of Allah are constantly seeking his forgiveness too, because they don't want that burden to end up causing them to end up with a bad ending in that grave 
and on the day of judgment. So again, guys, let's work on that. You want to be an ally of Allah. Keep your belief system correct. Keep on fulfilling your obligations, but also work on having hope. Work on seeking forgiveness for your sins too, because you're going to do some slips, slip ups. This part of being human. Okay, on that note, we'll stop right here for today. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, inshallah, type them on the screen.